everyone. It's so ironic that the Breakfast Club theme song just came on there. I think some of you know the Breakfast Club. Remember that movie, right? Mr. Garcia must know that one, right? Oh, that was during our high school years, exactly. I usually play that for freshman orientation, but that's a good, good song for tonight, too. So thank you all for coming. This is such an exciting night. I love uh, junior college planning night. Sometimes we have uh, younger students here as well. Do we have any sophomores here or freshman parents? No? Okay, that's all right. Sometimes they come early uh, to get that information as well. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, let me move it here. Get the slideshow going. Okay. So I was in this process about two years ago as well, and, and I've been doing this for over 20 years. And for me, there was some things I had to navigate as well, especially when I completed what's called the FAFSA form. You learned about the free application for student aid uh, at, at a later presentation, but even for the veterans, sometimes it's a process you have to learn as you go um, and, and ask questions. So I'm so happy that you're here so that you can get some vital information that I put together for you in the packets. And uh, we have Josh Rendell here from Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts here as well, who's gonna be presenting as well to give you some additional information and both of us, gosh, I think we have about 40 years combined experience. So I'm really happy that, that we're able to, to have Josh here with us tonight as well to give you this information. All right, so we've got what I call the dream team here. Uh, Mrs. Suki, uh, she's our new school counselor here at Wakona. She works with students with the last names A through G. Myself, uh, Pete Anderson, I work with students last names H through M. Mrs. Salavantis works with the students' last names N through Z. Uh, Mrs. Suki and Mrs. Salavantis, uh, apologize for not being able to be here tonight. They're in a professional development, uh, and as teachers, we all have to do professional development, and they're in the class right now. So, but they will be certainly following up with uh, your son and daughters, and uh, will be uh, kicking off the college planning with this evening. Mrs. Farley is our new administrative assistant. You might have remembered Mrs. Drosine if you had a previous uh, student here at Wakona. Uh, Mrs. Farley is active and, and working in that role this year now. So with the packets and handouts, I see some of you looking through some of it. I'm just going to go through it quickly um, just to share with you some of the things I, I gave you. The, the two on the right are the family action plans. Many times parents will ask me, where do I begin? And I found this to be a really nice resource as a parent um, to have a month-to-month -month kind of to-do list, things to think about. So it's called a Family Action Plan for grade 11, and then there's also one for grade 12. So I'm not going to read through all of it or anything like that, but it does give you some nice uh, reference to be able to go back to. Um, behind that, you'll see the high school profile of Lacona Regional High School. So it gives you our total enrollment. We send this to um, colleges with our students' transcripts and whatnot. So it has information about our school community, classes, graduates, where they go to college, and many times parents like to see the back, which is where students were accepted in the previous school year. So you'll see a number of schools where uh, our students from the class of 2022 were uh, accepted. So that's uh, for you to take a look at later. Um, there's also on the left side, you'll see some senior calendar notes uh, for month to month to help students plan for uh, each month as they are going through this process as a senior. There's also some dates for college board testing and ACT testing that you'll see. We're finding that the southern states are beginning to require SATs again. Many schools went SAT optional with the um, COVID uh, coming at us and went SAT optional. Uh, in New England, we still find many schools are SAT optional, but in the southern states, we are finding that SATs are getting put back into place. So if you're thinking of any schools, uh, I would just say in general, just double check about SAT school policies because they seem to change periodically. Um, so that's important to, to just be aware of. And you can find that right on their, their website, um, or you can always call admissions as well and they'll be able to give you the update on that if, if that is required. Typically, students take the SAT in the spring of their junior year 
And then they take the summer to get their results and practice, and then they might take it again in the fall of their senior year to take it a second time. And they can get uh, what they call, by taking it twice, they get a super score. So they like to take the, the best scores from both exams. So they, they combine them and take the best score for the students to use that in, in the college application process. If for some reason you struggle with testing and whatnot, you don't have to send those scores to schools if you don't want to. You can just keep them to yourself and share them if you wish, unless the school is, requires the SAT. So that's the only reason that you would have to definitely share it. Um, but many schools, like I said, are, are SAT optional. Other uh, registration information, uh, there's also the ACT, which is a, a competitor test to the, to the SAT. That is typically offered at Miss Hall School for the juniors, so that should be coming up on the April date if you're interested in taking the ACT at Miss Hall School. And then there's just some other documents for you for reference. There's a glossary and some tools that you can use for, for organization. So um, most of this stuff you can find online, we're, we're, but I still like to give, give students and, and parents some, some paper to work with as well. Okay. All right. All right, so we talked about this in the glossary, helpful timelines, uh, parent action plans, SAT testing, and helpful forms to stay organized. Again, this is a process. You want to take a deep breath as a family as you're going through this. Uh, I did find it kind, kind of fun and, and interesting to go on the school trips with my sons and, and, my, and my daughter. I think some of the best conversations happen in the car. <laughs> after you go to something like this. You know, it can be a good process after you do the tour together and then drive you back and then do something fun too. Go out to dinner or have, have food in the dorm if, if you really want to see what they're going to eat for four years. You know, that, that's important too. And you might get some reviews from the graduates that have come from Wakona that either the food stinks at high school or they love it. You know, it really depends on, on you know, the student and, and the school that they're going to. But I think that is important, the, the, food, the food piece. So uh, it wouldn't hurt to go and eat on campus when you do visit. Many students are visiting typically during the breaks now, like we're coming up in April break. Um, it's good to go onto the school's website and uh, see if there's availability that week and you can make a reservation. You typically make a reservation for campus visits right on the school's website. So you'll just go right to the website make the reservation and then, then you'll get a reservation uh, confirmation in your email from them. So like I said, it's a process one step at a time. We're here to help you through it. Oops. Going all the way to the end here. Sorry about that. Okay, so future planning. There's several paths, of course, so many uh, students are looking at two to four year colleges technical or trade schools. Mrs. Grady, our school counselor here, is dedicated to learning more about apprenticeships, technical trades, pathways that might not necessarily be college bound. So for students who are here tonight, if you're ever interested in anything like that, the technical trade, uh, any career schooling, apprenticeships, I'd like you to make an appointment to talk to her as well to get that information. That's, that's a good option as well and uh, on the job training and of course, military training. Some students choose that route. We just got done administering what's called the ASVAB, which is a, a test for students who are interested in going into the military, um, or just something to learn more information about themselves. Uh, so that's offered every year at school. So uh, they will be offering it again next year if it's something that your son or daughter is interested in. These are a couple references that I like to use for college planning. Uh, they haven't updated the college handbook in a few years, so it's still a 2018 version. You'll find that at Barnes & Noble if you're ever there having a coffee at Starbucks. They do have those there if you don't want to buy these books. I think this book costs about $30. It has all the information you need in it in terms of looking at schools. What I like about this, this guy is it distills it down. So you have every college in the book on the, book on the left. And then you have a nice this guide that gives you good descriptions about the college, some positives and negatives, some schools that uh, overlap with others, 
strong programs versus uh, the other programs they have, but this guide really gives you a nice distillation of things, and it'll give you the top schools in the country uh, in that booklet. So those two booklets are key that I use, and you can certainly use them as well at a place like Barnes & Noble. I'm gonna be sharing this uh, presentation with you after tonight, so you'll be able to go back to it, but there is a, a nice link here to an article about uh, is uh, your team prepared for college? Or are they ready to go off to this? This is an investment uh, for them. So uh, I'm not gonna go through all the article right now, but I'll share it with you so that you can have the opportunity to read it. And uh, it is a good read and talks a little bit about um, the college process, having the student take the lead with the college process, Sometimes I will have parents that'll do the work for the student, um, and sometimes that can go back and backfire um, because it's, it's your son or daughter that's gonna be going off to college and doing this sort of thing. And, and I found with my boys, um, there's a lot of things that they're getting in their emails that they have to respond to and work on that I, I don't even have access to. So it's really important uh, for, the, for the kids to take take this and own it um, because it is, like I said, a lot of money and it is an investment in their future. So, so that's an important part of the process. Uh, I'm happy to say that for students who may not be ready to go off to college, we have the wonderful Berkshire Community College here that they can go to, which is reasonably priced. And they could go there for two years and then transfer uh, after that two years uh, if they need to and uh, they save some money with that if, if need to as well. So it's nice that we have that option in the Berkshires as well. I do like to go over some of the basic costs. So you'll see Berkshire Community College for a year is about $6,692 a year without financial aid. MCLA is running now $25,791. Westfield, $24,704. UMass, $33,000. 120, and then the heavy hitters, like the, the, the top uh, private schools, are they're up there now, right? It's kind of kind of a sticker shock. This is without financial aid, so it's important to know that you should be applying for financial aid, for uh, need-based aid, but also for merit-based aid. And merit-based aid is based on grades, uh, performance in school and uh, you can get some pretty significant scholarships from that to bring those costs down. So Josh will point out to you that that, that is typically not the cost that you have to pay with financial aid involved. To give yourself, if, if you really would like to get a forecast for say like a Boston College and you wanted to see based on your income, every school has something called a net price calculator that you could actually go into onto their website and you type in your figures, your income figures, then you click submit and at the bottom they'll give you an estimate about how much it's gonna cost before you even apply. So I love the net price calculator. I believe the federal government required that all colleges put this in place and all you have to do is Google the college and then type in net price calculator and it'll come up for that specific college to give you a general idea of, of the cost even before you apply. We all have a lot of updates for students. You're gonna get a lot of information tonight, so I don't want you to get dizzy by it all. So uh, the weekly updates Mr. Rob puts out every Wednesday also has a guidance uh, newsletter that I update every week, and that's gonna have information about scholarships, uh, college visits, we have over 50 colleges that came to visit us this past fall. So they'll be coming again next fall and uh, uh, your students will be able to sign up for that on our Naviance platform to, to meet with them. Naviance is such a wonderful tool. When all of us here applied to college, it was all paper version, right? We had to put, put it in the mail and it was, it was pretty hard to stay organized. We're so happy to have Naviance and that will keep us organized. Your uh, kids will have a username and password for that. Uh, they are the drivers of that. Uh, so 
for my kids, they shared their usernames and passwords with me so I can look at it as well. Um, we do have a parent account I could give you, but it doesn't allow you to add or take colleges off. Only the student can add or take colleges off. So if you uh, would like a parent account, I can certainly uh, set one up for you, but it doesn't give you like full access. It would give you access to research schools and whatnot, but if there was a school that wanted to be added, your son or daughter would have to, have to do that. If you would like a parent account, please reach out to me by email, and I'll set one up for you and send you a username and password. But all of your kids do have an account for this now, and it was reset in their English classes when we went in and did uh, uh, course registration for this year. So they're all set with that, okay? So if you would like a parent account, please just reach out to me via email, and I will help set that up for you. All right. This is a good way for students to get some exposure to schools without visiting the campus. We do have a couple of college fairs coming up, one in Hartford at the uh, Connecticut Convention Center on March 30th from 6.30 to 8.30. And then there's one at Assumption, uh, May 16th from 5 to 7. Those are the evening ones I wanted to put out there. There are some other ones that are in the morning, but your uh, student would have to leave school to attend those. So. This is a chance for you to, to meet colleges and uh, talk to some of the admissions counselors and get some of their information if you are interested in attending something like that. BCC every year offers a college fair as well, but it's typically in the fall. And we have a bus that goes there for the kids that they can sign up for if they want to go to a college fair um, at BCC in the fall. And there are usually colleges from all over the, the country. So when you do sign up for these college fairs, they're gonna ask you some different things like campus size, campus setting, majors offered, institution, uh, geographic range, that kind of thing. So it gets you thinking about what, what sort of uh, setting you wanna to go to. Um, and it can be helpful as, as you're going into it. And it, the students and colleges will be matched based on your selection as you register for that. Any uh, students in here thinking about playing sports in college at all? Possibly, yes. See a show of hands of some? Okay. So you definitely want to do this uh, in the next uh, couple of months. You click on this link and you sign up for what's called the NCAA Eligibility Center. And that is for students interested in participating in Division II or Division I athletics. Uh, Division III athletics does not require you to fill this form out, uh, but I have had kids say, I'm not playing sports in college, I'm not gonna do it, no way. And then they get on campus and then they change their mind and, and they try out and you know sometimes they, they, can, they can make it. I had a student at Huzik one time who did a walk-on uh, for the girls soccer team at UMass Amherst. She didn't think she was gonna make it and then one of the players got injured the next week and she was on a D1 soccer team. Like, I couldn't believe it. Um, that was that was years ago, and, and uh, it was a pretty cool story when that happened. But in order to participate in practice, you have to do this NCAA eligibility center uh, form that they require you to fill out, and you have to take SATs as well. Uh, the score uh, limit is not super high, so don't don't be worried about uh, your score limit for eligibility for NCAA. But they do require that you take SATs as part of that. We will have a scholarship and financial aid meeting in the fall, just to give you an update about that, so that'll be a, a different meeting. We'll probably do that pretty early on because the FAFSA is being required, uh, the, the application opens up October 1st. So that's typically when they open up the application, so we'll probably have uh, our meeting right before that application opens for you. So this is that deadline I was telling you, or not deadline, but that's when they start it. Typically the deadline for filing a FAFSA is, depends on the college, but usually it ranges from February 15th to March 1st for, for a deadline. And if it's early action or early decision, when you apply earlier in the process, that financial aid deadline usually moves up as well. So I'm uh, throwing some terms out, early action, uh, typically is like November 1st to a November 15th deadline, early action and early decision.
decision is usually around then as well. Now these regular decision deadlines are like January 1, or the, then they can go all the way to like March 15th. Some are rolling and they can go all the way until uh, as late as April, May, even after that if they have room. It's important not to miss deadlines, that's super important. I know like when you sign up for hoops at the CRA every once in a while, they'll extend that deadline because they want more students in, right? We're all used to it in Dalton. They'll always extend that deadline. Sadly, with scholarships and colleges, they stick hard to those deadlines. So it's important to, to meet those deadlines uh, for that type of thing. So, okay. All right, before we go on to Josh, I just wanted to read this one thing that I put on the front of the uh, Voices blog that I saw, which was interesting with the, this whole process. The first step in developing a list of prospective colleges in or out of state is to establish an academic plan. What major are you interested in? What job do you hope to secure after college? Are you interested in a sub-program or a minor? What kind of environment do you learn best in? Is it lecture style with an emphasis on online work? Or is it small collaborative classroom work? These questions can often be hard to answer, and it's okay to not be entirely confident in your future. However, it is important to have a good sense of where to kick off your education. So that's from uh, a student voice uh, that, that was on uh, a website at one point, and I thought that was interesting to hear from. So Josh is gonna go a little bit more in depth about this process and give you some really good tips uh, I want to thank uh, Josh for coming tonight, and we'll go ahead and transfer the mic over to you, and then after that, we'll have some questions if we have any. Okay. Counselors, 
your family, your friends, your teachers, they're going to want to support you. They want the best opportunities for your future. So you just share with them all these possibilities that you're thinking about. And you're going to see, oh, there was a Wakona student at this school that you're considering and they can connect you. Oh, someone works in the business field and you could job shadow them for a day. Oh, maybe there's an opportunity for you to take classes over the course of the summer to get ahead of the college process. So students, the more people you tell, the more doors are going to become available to you and the more opportunities that maybe you're not even thinking about now are possibilities for your future. The other message I just want to leave with students, and we'll keep on kind of picking at it throughout the course of the next half an hour, is students, I'm going to challenge you to step outside your comfort zones a little bit. It can be a little bit challenging, it can be a little bit scary to think about this college process, to meet new people, but all you have to do is step outside your comfort zone just a little bit to begin to introduce yourself to colleges, and you're going to see opportunities for acceptance. You're going to see opportunities for scholarship funds. You're going to see opportunities for internships, for job placements, just by stepping outside your comfort zone a little bit going through the next couple steps. So with that said, Mr. Anderson did an excellent job kind of stating some of those pieces on how to get started. But one of the most important pieces is if you have not met your school counselor yet, first thing tomorrow morning, stop down in the office and schedule an appointment. You have amazing, amazing staff of school counselors here who wear their hearts on their sleeves and make sure that their students are successful. Your school counselors know the colleges that Wakona students have gone on to and have had great success. Your school counselors know how to connect you with admissions counselors, who's coming in, who's coming out of the school, your school counselors can easily pick up the phone and call the admissions office because they've built such positive relationships with schools. It's very, very common for Mr. Anderson and Mrs. Suki to call, Josh, hey, I have a student who's really thinking about your school. This is what their grades are. This is their interest. Do you think this is a possibility? Can we set up a tour? Can they come and visit? Can they sit in a class? Do all these above and beyond things that are not traditionally part of the college process, but important for you as smart consumers to see past and see the opportunities ahead for you. So making sure you have a chance to connect. Another really important piece is keeping yourself organized. One strategy is having a simple manila folder or an electronic folder, whichever works best for you, and putting in that folder that English paper that you're really proud of, that essay that you've written ahead of time, Maybe a piece of artwork, some music composition, something was written about you in the school newspaper or Berkshire Eagle. Adding that information to a folder, because that folder is going to come in handy two more times in the college process. Number one, number one school, you're sitting down with the admissions counselor for your interview. You want to be at that school. You walk in and say, Josh, this is the reason why I should be accepted at your college. This is all the great work that I've done in high school and I'm going to do the same thing at your school. That's impressive. On the admission side, that's very, very impressive to see when a student has that much self-confidence, that much organization. Second, you're going to write your college essay. It'd be helpful to start thinking about drafts now for your college essay so it's not so overwhelming in the fall. But all you have to do is open that folder and your story is in front of you. You'll see when you start to research the college essay, and you can go on Common App. There's five questions on Common App. The most common word in each of those prompts is the word you. And sharing your story. What is it that you're most proud of? Your greatest accomplishments. Where do you see yourself going in the future? Tell me your history. Tell me your story. When you pull that folder out, it's organized. It's right there. You can share those pieces. The other piece I just want to mention, too, is keep an eye on the news. If you're starting to think about different schools, Lots of things are happening in higher education right now. There's lots of changes. There are schools that are adding new programs. There's schools adding new majors. There's also, unfortunately, schools that are closing and in financial trouble right now, too. It's a big business world. So it's important to keep an eye on the news and to understand what's happening in the world of higher education. For so long, for so long, up until 2008, 
Higher education was fluid, you knew what you were getting, you knew the institutions and the majors and the programs. All of a sudden, 2008, the recession started flipping things around. Schools' investments went south. Some schools are still strong, some schools aren't. So it's really important to understand what's occurring because you want to attend the school that's going to be there in the future for you as well. Um, and then as Mr. Anderson mentioned, the SATs and ACTs. Um, I'm not going to harbor on these pieces, but SATs are, crit are critical reading, writing, and math. ACTs are critical reading, writing, math, history, and science. So if you feel that you're not a very strong math student, but you're a strong history student, maybe the ACTs are a little bit more user-friendly for you. And keep an eye, as Mr. Anderson said, many schools are transitioning, especially in the Northeast and the Midwest, of being test optional. So they're not requiring SATs or ACT tests. But if you're not submitting to the schools, you have to make sure that the rest of your profile for your application is really strong. And we'll talk about some of those strategies moving forward. But if you do nothing else before you have a chance to start connecting with school, before you reach out, you have to check yourself first. Students, this is where I'm going to ask you to step outside of your comfort zone a little bit. Think about it from the college side, right? I want the best possible students in my school. I have 400 students in my freshman class. I need the best possible possible 400 students. If I'm deciding on my 400 seat between you and another student, you have very similar transcripts, very similar clubs, organizations, your essays are strong, guess what I'm going to do? Guess what businesses are going to do when they interview you? Guess what scholarship committees are going to do when they interview you? They're going to put your name in quotes and Google search you. Usually high school students, the first thing that's going to pop up is your Instagram account, Snapchat accounts, if you're on Twitter. And if there's something that's questionable on there, if there's pictures that you're not proud of on there, clean it up now before you even start contacting schools. If you would not friend your grandmother, clean it up. Mama at yahoo.com, not an appropriate email for students and for parents. Chug a beer at Gmail, not an appropriate email to put out there. Two reasons. Number one, parents, we see your email addresses too when you apply because we ask for them. But also, we want to make sure we're the gatekeepers. The admissions office is the gatekeepers to the college, right? And especially in today's day and times, it's very, very important to be very careful about who you're admitting into the institutions. So we want to make sure that we're admitting the best possible students and strongest possible students out there. Again, the big business side. So really think about that. The other piece is simple email, professional email. First letter of your first name, your last name, add a free email account at Gmail. And use that for all your college applications because now it keeps you organized. It puts all of the materials that are coming from the college in one email address instead of five or six different email addresses. And then you can sort it by folders. You can put your top schools in different folders and it helps keep you organized. So really thinking about your social media presence before you even begin to start talking to schools, to start applying for jobs, to going through the scholarship process. And we're gonna talk quickly about what you should be thinking about now as juniors and preparing yourself academically for your senior year. So when the colleges receive your application, it'll be in the fall, usually around Thanksgiving time, December time. That means we're going to get your entire freshman, entire sophomore, entire junior year, and your first quarter senior grades. Colleges reward you for challenging yourself, for challenging yourself above and beyond other students. So let's say, for example, you're applying from Wakona High School to, to MCLA. On December 1st, our early action deadline, I can put the applications on my desk of all the students from Wakona. Right? And it can very easily go through and look at all the honors classes and circle them. I can highlight the AP classes, and I can also put a star next to any dual enrollment classes you've taken. In any honors classes, colleges reward you by giving you half a point higher. So if you got, a, say for example, you're taking college prep bio, 
you got a B in it, well, you can take it at an honors level, colleges can bring it up to a B plus. You're not going to see it, but the colleges see it. It's called reweighting grades, it's called rewarding you for challenging yourself above. AP classes, regardless of the AP exam, you usually get bumped up a point higher. In dual enrollment classes, if you choose to do dual enrollment at BCC or MCLA, that looks extremely well, especially at those top institutions you're looking at because it tells me as an admissions counselor, you've already taken college level work. You know what it's like to work with a college professor. You know how to handle the rigors of a college material and a college syllabus. You're able to balance college level work while you're still doing high school work and your clubs, your organizations, your sports, and everything else you can do. That's impressive. That tells me on the big business side, I'm gonna invest in this student because they already know how to do it. So something to think about. Um, MCLA just came out with our summer dual enrollment courses to your guidance counselors this past week. I'm sure BCC, if they haven't already, will be very, very shortly. But thinking about those as opportunities to really accentuate your college transcripts and your college application process. We also want to think about a list of people who you want to ask for recommendations. You have time. It's the spring of your junior year. What's going to happen in the fall, your senior year, is all your classmates are going to go ask the same teachers for recommendations. Those teachers will be inundated. I'm sure they're going to work very, very hard to write really specific recommendations for each of you, but don't put that pressure on them. If you ask them now to start thinking about a recommendation before you go into summer break, it's going to give them time to think about who you are as a student, how you impacted their classes, the type of experience you had with those teachers, it's important. It gives them a little bit of time, flexibility, and freedom to really write a stellar, high-quality letter of recommendation. If we're thinking about it from the college side, it's part of the application process. I may not have met you as an admissions counselor. I may not have met you at a college fair. may not have met you at the high school before. First time I'm meeting you will be in writing. And having that third person's perspective of who you are is extremely, extremely important. Now, remember I said I can line up all of Wakona transcripts on my desk. Same thing for all institutions. And I can easily see the teachers I give for everybody days. Well, that's not the recommendation you want. The recommendation that's going to be very strong and stand out is a B, a B minus, a C plus maybe. But you stayed after school, you worked extra hard, you did extra assignments, that teacher knows how strong of a student you are, how motivated you are, and when times get challenging, because they are in college, grades are gonna be challenging, that you're stepping up. That's the type of recommendations we wanna see. Thinking about coaches, thinking about clubs and organization advisors, thinking about supervisors for part-time jobs. If you work a summer camp, asking your camp director for a recommendation. Um, thinking about if you babysit, Asking that family for a recommendation, because not just anybody relies upon a student for, for babysitting, right? That takes a lot of responsibility and a lot of trust. If you volunteer, you're a volunteer organization. So we want a snapshot, colleges want a snapshot of what you're like in the academic setting and also what you're like in the community. And that tells us how well-rounded, how much of a leadership role you take and move forward with gives us a more solid picture, a more holistic view of the students. So having your academic side and your, your student, student life side pieces. Because when you get to college, half your learning is going to be done in the classroom, but the other half of your learning is going to be done learning how to live with a roommate, learning how to get involved in clubs, organizations, making friends, um, and, and working on that college life side of things in addition to your academic and then now is also that time to start planning and thinking about your first campus visits as well. Those campus visits, right? We talked about students stepping outside your comfort zone a little bit. Well, this is a strategy called power poses that can work for meeting a college admissions counselor. Maybe you have a big exam coming up. Maybe you're running the hurdles in track meet that you're really nervous about. Maybe you have a presentation to do in class. Um, power poses is a study done by Amy Cuddy, <coughs> excuse me, who's the dean of the MBA program at Harvard University. 
and she did a national survey and found that on those top pieces, by holding those power poses, going in the bathroom, closing the door in your room, holding one of these power poses ahead of time for three minutes, low, um, raises your cortisol, which is your fight hormone, and lower, I'm sorry, the opposite way. <laughs> Ra raises your testosterone, which is your fight hormone, and I got this hormone, and lowers your cortisol, which is your stress hormone. And it's just an interesting piece, but I wanted to add something a little bit different to the presentation for you to think about. Um, but as you see people do this, this could be one of those pieces. It really changes your chemistry and your dynamics and give you that extra little boost, that extra little kick. So if you're going to a college fair, you gotta get the guts up to say, hi, my name's Susie, I'm from Wakona High School, I'm very interested in your college. Can you tell me a little more about your bio program? That is impressive for an admissions counselor to see for you to have that type of self-confidence and that guts to walk up to an admissions counselor. We're just normal, everyday people, but in those type of settings, it can be intimidating because admissions counselor is the gatekeeper to your future, to your number one school. So thinking about how you're projecting yourself, how you're putting yourself out there. You're gonna have, let's take a step back, big business side of things. I have five admissions counselors that travel the country to be able to bring students into the college, right? In order for me to generate 400 students in my freshman class, I need to have at least 2,500 applications. I cannot ask one admissions counselor to come back with 2,500 applications, but I can ask them to identify their 40 top leads, their 40 top students that they have been most impressed with when they're traveling from September to November in the high schools, in the college fairs and events. And how do you become one of those top leads? Some of those pieces are putting yourself out there, stepping outside your comfort zone a little bit. If I'm an admissions counselor and I come to work on a high school and I meet this student, you might be super interested in my school. But I also have five other high schools I need to get to, and I know I have to get 40 students, 40 top leads. I'm not gonna waste my time with this student. Okay, we're thinking about the business side of things. But I am gonna take time. This student's smiling, they're happy to, to meet me, they're interested in what I'm having to say. Even if they're not, they're putting on a good show, right? I'm gonna take a couple minutes to make sure that I can connect with that student. Because they're putting their effort out, I'm gonna put the effort back. This next student, what they're telling me by their body language is they're not interested. They might be very interested, they just don't know how to come across. They're not thinking about how they're projecting themselves to be missions counselors. We're not gonna waste our time. I still need to go get 40 more students before the end of the, end of the semester. This student, smiling, shaking hands, very friendly, most likely could become a potential top lead. This student, probably not. This student, just by how you're engaging in the classroom, it's a very positive, positive experience. So students, I just want you to think about as you're beginning to introduce yourself to these college admissions recruiters, again, they're normal everyday people, but on the back side, the big business side, the side that you don't see, they have a job to do. And if they're not meeting their numbers, they may not be admission recruiters the next year. Some schools are very, very cutthroat. Some schools are very numbers, numbers driven. And that side you don't see. You see all the fun view books, the smiley, happy faces, the cool videos, the materials, but on the back side, it is a big business, okay? And how you're projecting yourself can win you a seat in that school that you're most interested in, just by simply stepping outside your comfort zone a little bit. So we're also in the spring of your junior year, and you're starting to prep going into the summer. Um, what should you be thinking about for the types of colleges you're looking for, that sense of comfort, that community, is that community the right fit? Um, what is their social media and their community pages telling you about? Exploring the area, what is the Chamber of Commerce in that region of one of those top schools you're most interested in? Is that school out in the farm country where you may not have access to transportation to get back home? If it, and that's something that you're interested in, excellent. But starting to learn about the regions, starting to learn about not just the campus and what the campus has to offer, but what the community around it has to offer for you as well. Because it's gonna be your home for the next two, 
four, six years. You want to be comfortable. You want to feel safe. You want to feel secure in your home setting. Um, and recording your impressions. Some of these places that you're going to be going to visit are like country clubs. Some are on the coast, on the ocean. Some are in beautiful mountain regions. Some are in beautiful cities. Um, and, but sometimes each school, because there's so many that you may be looking at, can be daunting. You might forget what one certain school offered. So you want to make sure that you're recording your impressions down, keeping a simple notebook so you don't get confused as you're going through the process and saying, oh, wait a minute, what did that school um, have to offer? I was really interested in the nursing program, but which one of them had the nursing? So thinking about it a little bit differently and keeping yourself well organized. <clears throat> Right now, there's lots of different options for you to explore colleges. Before COVID, no one was doing virtual events. Now, you can be sitting here in Dalton and be attending a college open house in Oregon. There's lots of great opportunities and a lot of amazing tools that not only can you utilize in person, but you can utilize virtually to get to know the college setting and communities. There's programs of information sessions and open houses that are all done virtually. There's virtual campus tours. There's college fairs and information sessions and breakout rooms. Colleges are sinking a lot of money, both in-person experiences and events and also virtual events. So keep in mind, these are also marketing tools. Those campus tour visits, they're gonna have the coolest videos, the greatest designs, and that's all a marketing piece for you. There's the Hartford Fair. We mentioned the Assumption Fair. What is a college fair? Well, a college fair is really exciting, but you have to be prepared or else it can be very, very overwhelming. So before you go to a college fair, you want to start sorting that pile of information that your poor mail person has been delivering. You've probably either thrown it on your bedroom floor or your dining room table, and you start sorting through it. One of the easiest ways is to create piles. Your pile of yeses, this school was the distance away from home, it has a major, it has a sport or the club I'm interested in, and it's a strong possibility. You have your maybe pile, maybe it's four hours away from home, but you want to be two hours, but it has the same major, so you kind of sit in the maybe pile. And then create a no pile, the pile that you're not interested in at all. It might be too far away, it doesn't even have a major, and get that information out of your house. Go recycle it because it's just gonna be confusing. And start focusing on your yes pile. And with your yes pile, you start doing your research. You go through those five schools. You have your college notebook. You write down questions that you have for each of those schools. What you wanna learn more about those schools for. And when you attend these college fairs, you can go on to the Hartford Fair. You can go on to the Assumption Fairs website and it'll give you a map of where each of the schools are gonna be. And you circle on that map those top five schools that you're most interested in. You also can create mailing labels as well. Because what's gonna happen at the college fair is I'm gonna be there, my table, nicely decorated, right? It's designed to capture your attention. I'm gonna have some cool stickers and pennants and brochures, um, but I'm also gonna have these inquiry cards. That's how, one of the ways that we capture your names, is these inquiry cards. And what happens most of the time, 90% of the time at a college fair, is a student might be really interested, but they're down writing on the inquiry card, trying to get all their name and information on the card, and six other people are coming up and capturing my attention. It's your job at the college fair to make contact with me to get my business card. It's not your job to sit there and try to fill out a card the whole time. So if you create a mailing label with your name, address, the high school that you attend, maybe the uh, major that you're thinking about, if you play a sport, you have it ready to go, you peel that label off, you stick it on the card, and instead of me talking to the top of your head, we can have a great discussion. So just a simple strategy, but it's a great way to move forward. Um, also having a discussion 
as a family before you walk into a college fair. It's nothing worse than a college fair where it's your time as a student to shine, your time to make haste by getting my contact information, by getting the admissions recruiter's information. It shouldn't be a time where you're having an argument um, with your family about who's gonna talk to who or what types of questions are gonna be asked. That all can be done at home, that all can be done in the car on the way in, relieving the stress that way. The college fair, it's your time to shine, students. You have your list of questions, you have your map, you walk into the college fair, students first. Again, this is where you step outside your comfort zone. Family members right behind you. Extremely important for family members to be part of the process, but at the end of the day, if I'm trying to find my top 40 recruits, my top leads, it's a student's name that's on the card. It's a student that I'm going to be contacting. Students walk in, hi, my name is Susie, I'm from Wakona High School. I'm very interested in your college. Can you tell me more about your science programs? I see, as a smart admissions counselor, that you have a notebook, that you've done your research about my school. I see that you have sticky labels and we're not even dealing with that inquiry card. I see that you're being polite, you have a smile on your face, you're willing to shake my hand. And then you can introduce your family members as well, so we all can have a discussion. Simple way to stand up from the crowd, but only maybe 5% of the students at a college fair actually do that. But guess what? As a smart recruiter, I'm going to make sure you have my business card when you leave the table. I'm going to take your information when I get to my hotel at night or back to the office. I'm going to send you a note, an email, a handwritten note, something to say that, hey, I really appreciate you stepping outside your comfort zone doing your research about my school, and I know that you could be an easy top lead for me to get. I can go back to my supervisor and say, these are the students that I was super impressed with at the Assumption Fair. I'm gonna work on them and become top leads. Then, shop around, because the colleges are gonna be throwing candy at you, they're gonna be throwing all sorts of cool trinkets at you, that's their marketing design. But also shop around. Once you meet your five schools, look around, see what else other people have to offer. You never know. This is a picture of a college fair if you haven't been. It's chaos. There's a lot of people. That Assumption Fair alone is probably gonna have about 100, 150 colleges there. And it's probably gonna have a lot of students from the Worcester area, which is highly populated and everybody looking for schools. <coughs> so how do you make sense of all this? How do you make sense of the chaos? Well, the college fairs are organized strategically in a way that they tend to be alphabetical order or they might be in by region. So if you know that McAllister is the number one school that is on your list, don't worry about stopping at Loyola or our Luther College. Go right to McAllister and introduce yourself. You have a chance to shop around with everybody else later on, but your most important critical piece at that college fair is to work and get the attention of that admissions counselor. For example, here, the admissions counselor in red She's talking to the student that has her head up. Notice the other two students are filling out those silly inquiry cards. They're not getting the attention. But guess what? That student who's in the middle is probably going to get her business card and probably going to get uh, a note later on. So something simple to think about, a unique strategy that stands you out from the crowd. So we're going to talk about some strategies for the college fair, and then I'm going to wrap it into your first college visit, and then we'll leave time for some questions from there. In the fall, we can come back and we can talk about the college essay process, the application processes, so it's a little bit different. Um, but to kind of keep things flowing for the evening, we'll talk about those visits, because that's another critical strategic piece. So as students, you leave the college fair with my business card, what do you do? You step outside your comfort zone a little bit, again, and send a simple email. Josh, it was really nice to meet you at the college fair. Thank you for taking the time to talk to my family and I about your school. I'm very interested in your college. Even if you're not very interested, tell me you are. Because that becomes a top lead. That becomes a strong interest. I'm gonna go out of my way if you choose to come and visit again. I'm gonna go out of the way to make notes about my experience, what I've talked to you about, and separating you from everybody else who is at that college fair. Again, December 1st, early action deadline on my desk. If I had an interaction with you, I take those notes, I print it, I put it in the file. I have a card, I have an email from you, I have a note card, even better from you, I print it, I put it in that file. Your file gets thicker and thicker, the first, the thick files get the first reads. The thick files 
get the first reads, get the first acceptances, and get the scholarship funds. Because we have scholarship money that we need to get out into the public as quick as we possibly can. We know the students that apply early action are usually the high flyer students, the students that we want in our seats at the college, because they're gonna be game changers for the institution, they're gonna be successful, and we have the scholarship money to get out. So think about it. As Mr. Anderson indicated, those deadlines are extremely important. So thinking about making sure you're hitting those deadlines ahead of time in simple ways to make your file a little bit thicker to capture the attention of the admissions counselor. So you have your top five schools that you've identified. You want to go visit one of them. How can you make that visit successful for you and for your family? By doing your research ahead of time. So now you've met me at the college fair, or maybe I came to your high school, you started taking notes, create another page in your notebook about more in-depth questions. Could you tell me a little bit more about where your bio students do internships, where your business students have gone on to the workforce? In creating those more in-depth questions that show once you get to the college campus that you have a strong interest in that school. Do your research on MapQuest and figure out how to get to that institution. <coughs> You're from Berkshire County. We know from Berkshire County it's not easy to get here and it's not easy to get to anywhere else and there's always that challenge. So go on MapQuest, if it says three hours, add another 45 minutes, add another hour because you might hit traffic, you might hit school buses, you might hit road construction, and if you get there early, that's great. You can look around. You can drive around that town, that city, see what it's like. You can get a cup of coffee, relax. Have that discussion in the car. Have that discussion ahead of time. Who's gonna play what role when you get to the college? Okay, students, the ideal situation is you arrive a little bit early, everybody's relaxed, settled in, Students walk into the admissions office, and remember, it's a big business, so everything you do now gets tracked. You walk into the admissions office, students, you step up, you introduce yourself to whoever's at their front desk. Hi, my name's Susie, I'm from Wakona High School, I'm very excited to be here today. This is my family, and guess what? They're gonna have you get settled, they're gonna give you coffee, they're gonna give you snacks, they're gonna put you next to a nice fireplace, get you warm, and then all of a sudden, there's gonna be a tour guide from bouncing down the stairs, bright, sunshiny, smiley face, and they're super energized. It's all recruiting. It's all marketing. You, smart consumers, students jump up, introduce yourself first. Students have their notebooks, they're next to the tour guide. Parents are just one step behind them, listening in, everything going on, but students, it's your ownership. You follow the tour. That tour guide is gonna have a tour script in their hand to tell you which dorm which classroom, which athletic facility they're gonna to go to. It's all designed, it's all scripted. It's your job, come back from that tour, take it all in, soak it all in, write down all your notes, but then it's okay to go back out on campus. It's okay to look around. Go into some of the classrooms that you didn't see. Try the food in the dining hall. Make sure it's up to your specs. Make sure if you have certain needs that those needs can be met. Ask to go into um, the male residence hall versus the female residence hall that they showed you. Okay, so this, as Mr. Anderson said, 30, 40, 50, Boston College, $80,000 a year. That's like buying a brand new BMW each year for the next four years. <clears throat> you wouldn't buy a brand new car without taking off for a test ride, right? Same thing goes with your college piece. Take it all in, rely upon what they're telling you as facts and through the admissions office, but try it out on your own. If you're an athlete, spend an overnight with a team, get to know the coach. If you are a bio major and you're gonna be in the labs, ask to be able to see those labs. Um, as you're starting to go through the process and you know the schools you've been accepted to, ask if you can do an overnight visit. Additional ways for you to get the best feel for that school, because it is a major commitment. I'm going to leave off on a quick story. When I was going through um, my college process, I had this one institution that I was very, very interested in. Um, I was getting calls from the soccer coach to come up and visit. I was getting calls from the business offices to come up and visit. I was getting all this great material. 
And he said, hey, Dad, let's go up, check it out. They have an open house coming up. So Dad and I got in the car. We went up to the school's open house. We drive down their, their main road entering campus, and there's these beautiful signs of balloons all directing us where to go. Get out of the car, the students are all bright, shiny, happy. They say, okay, go to the campus center, and we have a really nice uh, brunch set up. Sure enough, steak tips and lobster tips. On the brunch, set up. The president of college gets up, gives this great motivational speech. Everybody's super excited. We go out on tour, we see this wonderful residence hall, smells amazing, super clean. We go to this classroom, it has those drop-down smart boards, everything's Wi-Fi compatible, you bring your own laptops and you can write your own notes on your laptops. Awesome, awesome experience. So I go back to the car, we're getting ready to go, and my dad, smart guy, it's a police investigator, and he's like, well, that was great, but let's just take five minutes to walk around on our own. Let's take five minutes to just see what else is going on. So we asked the student, well, where do the freshmen actually have their classes? And the student's like, well, you have to go over two busy streets and it's an old elementary school looking building. Sure enough, we walk over the two busy streets and it's an old elementary school looking building and it even has the short little lockers. And we walk into the classroom and it's the old wooden desks. Two desks are broken, put off in the corner. It's got a big green chalkboard with a crack down the middle and there's graffiti spray painted on the back wall. This is where the freshmen have their classes. That wasn't what we saw on the tour. So we asked the student, all right, where are the guys that actually live on this campus? It's like, well, you go back over those two busy streets, it's right on the main road, you can't miss it. You walk over those two busy streets, go right in, into the front entrance of the building, there's no lock on the door. Anybody could walk off off the street. We walk into the foyer, and I kid you not, there's a toilet bowl smashed in the middle of the hallway, trash strewn up and down the hallways, and that's where the guys were living on the campus. So we got back in the car, we headed home, never looked back. I'm very, very happy we did those extra missions. I'm not kidding you, it's a true story. <laughs> um, if I would have chosen to go there just based on what I saw firsthand, it's expensive to transfer. You lose credit, you lose time, you lose money. So you wanna make sure that you're making the best possible choices and you're doing your research well ahead of time. This is the dorm room that they show you on tour. This is the dorm room that they don't show you on tour. Is that what you want to live in? So really thinking about, and as I talk about, what is the big business side of the process? And how do you look past all the pomp and circumstance? Students stepping outside your comfort zone just a little bit to find the best institution that's going to be the right fit for everyone. And then the follow-ups. So you had a chance to visit, you met your tour guides, you met your admissions counselor, and then continuing to make contact, building that relationship with the admissions counselor, sending a thank you note goes a long, long way. Like I said, it builds that file a little bit for you, so the thicker files get the early acceptances. Recording your impressions again, and driving around town. Trying to visit, especially if it comes down to one of your top schools, to visit on a weekday, on a Wednesday, and visit on a Saturday or Sunday morning. What's it like? Colleges can be two different beasts, two different times of the week. So you wanna think about, are there cars in the parking lot? Or if I'm gonna be four hours away from home and there's no one here on the weekends, do I want that experience? Are there empty 30 racks of beer strewn around the parking lots and around the dorms on a weekend? Is that the type of experience I want? So really trying to get a good understanding of that institution during all the times you're gonna be there. And especially now, if you're gonna start planning your visits during the summer, it's beautiful on the campus in the summer. The trees are in bloom, the grass is green, no students are there. You're gonna be there in the fall, you're gonna be there in mud season. And what's it like on those campuses and is it something that you're looking forward to? So final tips to close out tonight's presentation. Again, students, this is an amazing, exciting time for you. Be your own self-advocates. Step outside your comfort zone just a little bit to introduce yourself to these schools in a positive light, and it's gonna go a long, long way for you. And tell people, tell people what you're thinking about because your friends, your family, your teachers, your school counselors are gonna be your greatest assets and your greatest advocates. And if they don't know what you're thinking about, they can't help you, and they want to help support you in these next steps. 
Um, in planning ahead, staying organized, keeping that file of all those amazing accomplishments that you've had because it's gonna go a long way for your essay, for your college interviews. And then it's your time. Many of these places are gonna be fascinating. It's your time as family members to be able to go out, enjoy, check out some of these really cool places and to take it in, as Mr. Anderson said, it as a unique adventure for yourself and your family. Because once you get to college, you may not be able to afford to do these types of trips for a while. So you want to make sure that you're taking full, full experiences. And the more you can do now in the spring of your junior year, the less stress it's going to be during the fall of your senior year. Um, you're going to have clubs, you're going to have plays, you're going to have senior events, you're going to have athletic events, you're going to be really focused on doing well in your classes. It's going to be stressful during the fall of your senior year. And the last thing you need is to add additional stress from the college process. So the more that you can think about for those recommendations, for choosing the right classes, for starting your college visits, for narrowing your search down, starting a draft of your college essay now is going to pay off in dividends in mental health in the fall. So thank you very much for your time tonight. I hope this was helpful to give you that inside perspective of what happens on the college side um, and how we can best support you. One other piece I just want to mention as a quick commercial is we are the Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts. We're the Berkshire's four-year public institution with over 80 different programs and majors to study from. Um, and we're not just here to encourage you to attend the institution. That wasn't what our presentation was about tonight. Um, it's here to help support you. So whether you're thinking about MCLA or not, please utilize us as a resource. You're welcome to call our admissions office and ask questions. You're welcome to call our financial aid, ask, financial aid offices and ask questions. We're here as the public college to be able to support you in whatever your decision and your next steps are. But we're also very, very proud to announce that it's taken four years in the making, but on Friday of last week, we announced that we will be offering, starting this fall, a bachelor's in nursing program to really help support the healthcare needs of the Berkshires, to help support our healthcare heroes here in the Berkshires, and to allow um, nursing to grow and thrive in Berkshire County. So if anybody is interested in nursing or the health sciences, this is a really exciting new piece that we're offering to the campus. Um, starting this fall. So thank you very much. I'm happy to take questions. Mr. Anderson's happy to take questions. How can we help? Um, yes. What, what would you offer um, as advice to uh, freshmen going to college as far as mental health support getting to college? Sure. So we would strongly encourage colleges have amazing, especially uh, through the development of COVID, um, mental health counseling supports, health services supports, counseling supports. Um, they will have academic advisors. They may even have student advisors as well. And a lot of times students, again, this is where they have to step outside their comfort zone a little bit, is to say, um, it's okay. I'd like to step in. I'd like to talk to a counselor. I'd like to meet with these people. And each of the schools are going to have their own strategies once you arrive during their orientation sessions on how to go about that support but understand it's okay understand that there's no stigmas attached understand that it's an opportunity for students to make sure that they are academically successful and healthy going through their college process so there's a lot of mental health support pieces in place and a lot of money from the state and the federal governments and institutions right now to build out the health counseling services and also um, uh, the personal health programs of the schools Sure. Yeah. So, so the college application process, and you'll start this in the fall, and Mr. Anderson and his staff will certainly be able to share a little bit more with you on how they navigate those processes here at Wakona. But there is early action, there is early decision, and there's rolling admissions. Those tend to be the three traditional processes for college applications. Early action, there's a deadline. And if you have your materials in by early action, Colleges will give you a certain date that you'll have a decision back to. So typically early action is before, right before Thanksgiving or December 1st, and the colleges guarantee that you'll know a decision before the holidays. 
and that decision is non-binding. So you do not need to make any type of financial commitment back to the college. It's just you know that you've been accepted and it gives you that sense even going into the holidays that, all right, I know I've been accepted to this school. It takes a little bit of pressure and stress off. Early decision is when it's more elite institutions like your Williams, your Bentley, your Bates, Boston College has early decision processes. And that means you apply by that deadline and it's your commitment if you are accepted back to them that you pull your applications from those other institutions if you've been accepted. Um, and there's a financial commitment that goes along with it. It says, even before I know what some of my financial aid packages is, I'm committing to your institution because you're my number one choice and where I want to be. And then rolling admissions is a lot more flexible and freedom. So usually rolling admissions allows you to apply anytime from the fall throughout the course of the spring and sometimes even during the early summer. But keep in mind that as the process marches on, the less and less seats become available, the less and less scholarship money is available, the less and less financial aid money is available. So it is always better to try to apply in the fall or early spring in order to get the best types of aid scholarship packages. One thing I wanted to mention about early decision is with the highly competitive schools, if you see a, a highly competitive school that you really, really want, uh, it's to your advantage sometimes to go early decision with a school like that, like a Williams College or a, a Yale, Harvard, Princeton, that type of thing. If you know that's what you want, go for it. Uh, you can go out of that if you cannot afford it. They are gonna give you a financial package to review. And if you look at that package and you can't afford it, you can not, you know, you can say that to the school and, and, and go to the other ones that you apply to. But typically, you can only apply to one school early decision, and there's a contract that you sign for that. So I just wanted to clarify that. So thank you very much for your time tonight. Pete and I will be here for a while, so if you have any individual questions you'd like to ask us, um, certainly we'll keep the auditorium open for a while. But best of luck in the college process. Please, again, feel free to reach out to MCLA if you have any questions about your search, about financial aid, we're here to help and support you. Um, and have a wonderful evening. It's supposed to stay warm tonight, finally. Make us all feel a little bit better for these days. Um, but congratulations for starting your process early and thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. We really appreciate your time. We look forward to working with you.